This video will describe three different strategies for creating RockWorks playlists that produce static groundwater contamination models. The first strategy is designed for contaminants within glacial outwash, such as a 1,4-dioxane plume west of Ann Arbor, Michigan. The second strategy is designed for contaminants leaking into an epicarst zone, such as a TCE plume within the Lehigh Valley of western New York State. The third strategy is designed for contaminants migrating through fluvial deposits, such as RDX, at a decommissioned ammunition plant in southeast Nebraska. A playlist is a RockWorks tool that is used to process a user-designed sequence of instructions. To illustrate how the playlist works, we'll start with a spreadsheet of data in which each row represents a borehole within a coal evaluation study. The columns contain borehole coordinates, stratigraphic thicknesses, and analytical results for three coal seams. Specifically, these analyses include ash, sulfur, and BTU values for each of the three coal seams. Manually evaluating this data involves many steps. For example, grid models are generated for the different parameters, such as the unit thicknesses. The first step in the automation process is to save the menu settings that are used to create each model within the playlist. This is accomplished by filling out the menu for each unit, running it to make sure that everything is correct, and then clicking on the playlist button to add this step to the master playlist. Upon completion, the playlist will contain a list of all the steps required to create the necessary models. In this example, the final playlist contains 67 steps. Double-clicking on an item within the playlist will display the associated menu and the parameters used for that particular operation. This provides a means for editing the playlist without the tedium of learning a scripting language. Clicking on the Process button will sequentially execute all of the checked items within the playlist. This processing may take minutes, hours, or even days depending upon a variety of factors including model resolution, input data, gridding algorithms, and so on. In this example, the models for each seam were filtered to determine where coal can be surgically mined with the optimal results based on acceptable overburden thicknesses, interburden thicknesses, coal thicknesses, highest BTU values, lowest ash, and sulfur content. The final command within this playlist consolidates the results into a Word report. As a consequence, the steps listed within a playlist essentially represent strategies for creating models that answer very specific questions. Okay, that's what the playlist does. Now it's time to dig into the examples of how the playlist was used to model three different types of contaminant plume modeling. In the first example, 1,4-dioxane leaking from unlined ponds at the Gelman chemical plant has been migrating through glacial outwash from at least 1986 to the present. The strategy for evaluating this plume consists of creating a ground surface model, creating a lithologic block model based on borehole data within a relational database, converting the lithology model to a hydraulic conductivity model based on a table of lithologic conductivities, creating a maximum historical water level grid model, truncating the hydraulic conductivity model based on the maximum water level model and isolating the permeable zones to produce a Boolean permeable impermeable or BPI model, and modeling the geochemistry for specific time periods as constrained by the BPI model. The playlist on the right shows a portion of the 102 steps that were used to create the final plume model. The flowchart in the center graphically summarizes the steps within the playlist. This portion of the playlist takes approximately one hour to process. The final portion of the playlist, requiring approximately eight hours to process, was used to create a series of animations depicting the way views within the lithology model Blue migration from 1986 to 2021. Notice how the wells appear and disappear. The disappearing wells represent wells that were not sampled during the associated time period.
Education Collateral. The second example shows the steps used to model a TCE plume migrating through unconsolidated sediments into karstified carbonates. The process began with the creation of a ground surface model based on borehole collar elevations. The borehole diagrams depict lithology, stratigraphy, and fractures as discs. Later on, these fractures will be propagated within selected formations. Item B shows a lithology model for the unconsolidated sediments that was generated with a lateral blending algorithm. Item C shows a stratigraphy model for the underlying carbonates. These two models were consolidated into a geologic model, shown in item D, along with the fractures, which were assigned G values just like the lithology and stratigraphy voxels. Item E shows a hydraulic conductivity model in which a lookup table was used to assign hydraulic conductivities to the lithology, stratigraphy, and fracture values within the geologic model. Item F depicts a maximum water level surface model that was subsequently used to truncate the hydraulic conductivity model. The hydraulic conductivity model was then filtered into a Boolean or true-false model in which values greater than a specified threshold were set to either true for permeable zones or false for impermeable zones. In item G, the hydraulic conductivity models were then subjected to a geobody filter that removes unconnected zones where there's no hydraulic communication that do not connect with the contaminant point source. Finally, the geochemical values for four time intervals, item H, were modeled. These geochemical models were constrained by the BPI or Boolean permeable impermeable model. The playlist on the right shows the 23 steps that were used to create the final plume models. The flowchart in the center summarizes the steps. This playlist takes about 30 minutes to process. The map in the upper right corner of this animation shows the plume migration in plan view while the larger diagram shows the plume migration in 3D as viewed from the southwest. The third example is based on direct push geoprobe data that included hydraulic conductivity, TCE, and RDX data associated with a decommissioned munitions plant in southeastern Nebraska. The geology consists of fluvial deposits. Unlike the previous two examples, the goal within this study was to simply multiply the current TCE and RDX models by the hydraulic conductivity model to create mass flux models. These models were then sliced to create vertical transect cross sections. These animations provide a means to see inside the TCE and RDX mass flux models to delineate the areas of maximum contamination. Groundwater site characterization and remediation projects are dynamic. New monitor well data is introduced as the plume is delineated. Bad data is corrected. It's an iterative start-stop process that involves doing the same tasks over and over with hiatuses in between while managing other similar start-stop projects. Without automation, this repetition can destroy our will to live. Playlist automation provides an audit trail of what was done and the parameters that were used at every step within the process. These playlists can be used within litigation depositions, the discovery process, and during expert testimony. Given the typical five-year delay between report writing and litigation, playlists provide a memory jogger that can minimize stress and embarrassment. As previously mentioned, groundwater contamination projects typically progress in fits and spurts. Playlists provide a means to quickly update and restart projects long after forgetting what was done during the previous iteration. Playlists also provide a means to quickly and easily experiment with different algorithms and diagram nuances such as color schemes. As an analogy, consider a recently completed building construction in which someone asks what the building would look like if it was rotated 5 degrees. With playlist automation, the answer is, let's try it, rather than, that will cost a lot of time and money. Consider a business that monitors multiple gas stations for tank leakage on a regular basis. Repeating the same steps for every gas station in every time interval can be a tedious process. 
whereas playlist automation can be used to perform boilerplate analyses and streamline the reporting process. Finally, playlists can provide a means to short circuit the typical try this, try that technical support process when communicating with Rockware programmers. Playlist automation isn't just for contaminant plume migration modeling. All of the Rockworks markets can benefit from playlist automation. If the answer to the question of will I ever do this again is yes, the benefits of playlist automation are hopefully obvious.